So Patriot, you've heard lots about. It's it's a, a, a very capable system that's been around for several years. It's used in NATO by five different countries currently. It's the backbone of air missile defense in NATO and Europe today. So when you look at that, it's got a long history and it's constantly being modernized to the current and future threats through that partners of 13 different countries that are partners in, in uh, Patriot around the world. Key elements that you have to understand is it is combat proven constantly. There is ongoing engagements in hostility to today in parts of the world that is constantly challenging the defensive architectures. Patriot is being used today almost constantly in these environments. And those what I'll call operational lessons learned, the, the technology lessons learned are constantly being factored back into modernizing the system as it is tested in, in real operations and also in other stressful engagements and, and, and scenarios in the test environment, constantly being involved. The other aspect I want to bring up is, is the elements of the system in a future slide, but the missile mix. The missile mix is critical because the complex threat environment we face, you really have to look at what are the types of missiles and the optimization of capability against threat and cost avoidance and cost of matching of the threat you look at. So the missile mix is important based on the particular country's threat environment. Mm -hmm. Patriot today has the major elements of sensor radars, what I'll call decision loop command control communications, and the effector, the missiles, or in, in other cases, cyber attack or something like that. That's true of Patriot today. In the future, all of those elements are evolving and modernizing. They've constantly evolved over the past, and they're constantly going to evolve in the future. The radar itself is modernizing in two key ways. It's going from a space-fed array to an active array in two configurations, and I'll talk about what the key element of that technology-wise. The command and control is evolving to common, common command control, and I'm sure you've heard the IBS, IBCS term. That's in the future roadmap as well, as well as adding additional factors cost balance the equation from a cost affordability and capability point of view as the threats evolve. So you can see those three elements as we go forward. To the radar side, the key element is again substrate technology. The key part of GAN or gallon nitrate is the thermal conductivity property of it. Very simple. That's the basis way of looking at the improvement. It allows you to pack a denser circuit on that substrate because the heat dissipation is better than previous uh, materials, namely the gas. That improvement alone allows you to have more capacity, more capability in a smaller footprint, or take the same footprint and make it more cost effective, cheaper to produce. This key technology is being used by Raytheon in many different products, including the future Aegis radar system, AMDR, and some of the other products for other services in the US. This is part of the, uh, the uh, program for Poland going forward. A key aspect of this is uh, transferring key technologies with the Patriot system, current and future, to polish industry for long-term maintenance sustainability as well. You see that in some of the future activity. So the radar itself is being modernized. Uh, the Space Fed Array is actually the current system deployed by most countries today. There's several different configurations out there that are managed in a network environment to work together. Uh, as that evolves, you'll, you'll basically take off that Space Fed Array one option is the new front panel, which is all active arrays. Um, effectively, you're taking a single transmitter receiver chain and make it thousands of transmitter receiver chains on the array face itself. It gives you much more operational flexibility. It reduces the operation and maintenance cost by at least 50% because you're taking away a lot of the internals of the radar and putting them in individual elements that are cheap to make. I say relatively cheap to make. It's still not cheap, cheap. Um, and the other option is additional panels on the rear to give you a full 360 without rotating. Key to that is, is operational performance. The more you have to rotate in stressing environments, the more you lose some of the capabilities on large, on large and complex threats. And that's all I can really say about that, but it's a key element of a staring array that gives you 360. Key element of the missile uh, being uh, uh, proposed as part of the Poland program is the Sky Scepter. A little bit of history, Sky Scepter is currently, uh, in its current variation, is part of the Davidson weapon system in Israel. It's called the Stunner missile. It's actually deployed today uh, in Israel and in production. Uh, it is a co-developed missile by uh, Israeli industry and U.S. industry. Um, and very effective because what we have is full uh, approval by the U.S. government, Israeli government, to share technology with PGD in Poland, as well as uh, do Maduro, uh, 
large percent of the production and development of any upgrades in Poland. That gives the capability for uh, a hit-to-kill interceptor in this threat environment that is also very cost effective. It, it reduces the cost of the missile, uh, most complex missile, by about 20, uh, down to 20% 20 of the cost, so it's a fraction of the cost of current missiles. That's very important when, in some of the previous discussion, we talked about mass raids or cost of, of attack versus defense. Having more uh, cheaper interceptors or effectors, if you will, balances that equation a lot better because you can get more of them. So a key benefit to the Sky Scepter is not only the capability it provides and the cost, but also I mentioned the industry participation. Greater than 50% of this can be co-developed and produced in here. The changes to the missile from the current deployed version that's in, in Davidson weapon system would be to make it NATO safety certified. Not very complex development as far as changes to the missile, so it's about a very high percentage complete for that configuration. But for NATO and US standards, we need to make it safety certified in certain areas. The other change would be to integrate it fully into Patriot and the network centric architecture. That gives us the full capability to do that. That is being planned as part of the program as well. And that concludes it. So you've got an aspect of a system that's, that's as I mentioned, the forefront in the VISTA uh, program. Key aspects of technology evolution and key aspects of industrial partnership that are two aspects of security that I think are very important.